Good morning, River Church. How are you guys doing today? Uh, my name is Billy, and I will be leading you guys through today's devotional. Um, a few things that I'd like to say before I actually uh, speak in the devotional is, one, I know I look like a fighter pilot with these headphones on. Um, I bought them for my wife uh, to use. She is not a fighter pilot, uh, but she uh, she teaches kids, uh, tutors kids, English, uh, Chinese kids, English. And so I bought her these because they fit around her ear better. Uh, it's poor, more information than you're probably wondering. And then the second thing I like to tell you guys is this is actually her workspace for that. So if you look in the back, you see this whiteboard. It says teacher Elise. My name is not Elise. That's my wife's name. Um, but this is her space. So I just, I, I hijacked it uh, to be able to do this devotional with you guys. So anyway, yeah. So my name is Billy. That should read Billy. Um, but I'm excited to be here. Uh, I know we're in a in a awkward, not awkward, a but just a time that we've never been uh, in 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 relation to this virus, and it's just it's crazy. It's crazy. I've talked to some of you guys, and I'm trying to stay current with y'all and check up on you guys and uh, and see how you guys are doing. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope uh, today's um, devotional encourages you uh, a little bit, and so. Yeah. Uh, before, before, also before we begin, uh, before we begin, I would like to also tell you guys that um, tomorrow night, Friday night, we're going to be having a a Good Friday service, and so uh, it'll be all the information will be on the the, the church website, uh, riverchurchrgv.com, uh, and it's a really cool roundtable discussion with uh, with uh, with me, Randy, uh, and, and and Lydia and Elise, and so. Um, it's really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you guys, uh, hope you guys get a chance to check it out. So that'll be tomorrow night. I think it's at seven. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure on the time. You can find it all on the website. So, um, yeah. Okay. So today for today's devotional, I'm going to be reading, uh, going, I've, I've been going through Matthew, the book of Matthew. Um, and there is no real like it wasn't next on my reading list or anything like that. But as I had been reading the Bible and as I had been studying different uh, aspects of scripture, different parts of scripture, um, and just trying to understand more and grow in my, my, my knowledge, my faith. Uh, as I was searching through questions, I, I, I constantly was pushed back to Matthew and uh, uh, references Bible verses that I was looking for. It was constantly pushing me back to Matthew. So, you know, and I decided, let me read, let me read Matthew. Uh, I, I mean, I've read it before, but let me read it with a, a, a more intentional, uh, close reading. And so uh, I've been doing that. I've been talking to my gospel community about uh, Matthew chapter, uh, chapter four, I'm sorry, the, the book of Matthew for a while now. And so, uh, yeah, my mind's kind of been around Matthew. Uh, but anyway, today we'll be in, in Matthew chapter 4, uh, verses 23 to 25. It's like the last two verses of the chapter. Uh, but before we start Matthew chapter 25, I want to, Matthew is writing uh, his book, uh, The Gospel of Matthew, or The Gospel of Jesus According to Matthew. He's writing it um, <clears throat> basically to establish Jesus's kingship. Like Jesus is the king. Jesus is the promised king of the Jews that they were anticipating, they're hoping for. Jesus um, is that guy. And he spends, you know, the first chapter, like really showing the lineage of, of Jesus, <coughs> his, um, his, uh, his lineage, uh, his, his line, his birth line. Uh, and so quickly establishing that. Um, and then he's the, 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 the following chapters are kind of just showing how Jesus fulfilled different parts uh, of, of what the scriptures say. And so it's, it's all like, Hey, Jesus is the King. Right. Um, and so he's done that. He's the King he gets baptized. He goes to uh, the, uh, he goes up into the mountains to be tempted uh, uh, by Satan. Right. Then, then he comes down from there and says, he begins his public ministry he calls his disciples um and then he begins he begins 
preaching, right? And so uh, that's kind of where we find ourselves today. And so I'm going to, I'm going to read uh, right here. It's Matthew chapter four, <coughs> excuse me, uh, verses 23 to 25. And it reads, uh, <clears throat> and he went through throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Right. So Jesus just begins uh, his ministry and he's preaching, he's teaching to the, the people who believe in Jesus, uh, who have expected Jesus, who are familiar with these teachings. He's proclaiming the gospel to people who don't know Jesus, right? He's, 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 he's reaching, he's proclaiming, it says he's proclaiming uh, the gospel of the kingdom, right? Um, and the third thing he does, and this is where I want us to sit on today, is it says he heals every disease and every affliction among the people. And so he's healing their physical needs at this point. I really love this passage. Um, it doesn't say, it doesn't say that Jesus was healing only the people that believed in him. It doesn't say that they had to meet certain uh, characteristics or qualities in order to uh, in order to be healed by Jesus. They just came and broken and paralyzed and just whatever disease they had. And Jesus it says Jesus came and he saved them. So that's, man, that's a beautiful, a beautiful picture. Um, but, but one of the things that you see here, and this is how I want to encourage this is, is as Christ calls us to himself and as Christ saves us, he doesn't just save us. He doesn't just call us into a relationship with him, but he also calls us to, to go, right? To go out, to make much of Jesus where we are in our communities, in our neighborhoods, right? Jesus calls us to himself for the work of the gospel. Um, and so it's, 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 he calls it up and out, right? Um, and so it's a beautiful picture. It's a, it's a beautiful idea of I have been called, right? The, they ask Jesus, what are the two greatest commandments? And Jesus says, to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so there's this out, there's this, this, this love with the Father, but this also, also this love with our neighbors, right? <clears throat> and so I've been wrestling with that. Like, what does that look like? You know, how do, how do I love, how do I love my neighbors well? How do I love the people around me well? And so I've, I've been talking to friends about this and, and where I tend to go is, you know, I want to love people the way that I want to love them. And so one of the things that I thought of, like, how can I, how can I just love my neighbors well? And, and then I thought, oh, well, well, maybe, maybe if I just, maybe if I made them pancakes and every Saturday morning, I just made pancakes or maybe once a month, I just make pancakes for my neighbors and uh, nothing wrong with making pancakes. If someone, somebody makes me pancakes, like, please bring them. I love pancakes. But, um, but when I think those thoughts, I tend, I tend to miss a great opportunity and that's to meet people's needs, to meet people where they are. At. And Jesus does that here in Matthew chapter four. He meets people where they are at. And so uh, I want to encourage us. I know we are in a time of isolation, a time of, of exclusion where we're not around other people. But man, the, the world, uh, the world of the people, who, the people are hurting right now. Christians and non-Christians are hurting right now. And, and, and let us be a people that just loves, just loves them and is able to to, to meet their needs well. And so how, how, do, how do we do that? How can we do that in this time? And <clears throat> there's two, two steps I wanna, I wanna give you guys before we wrap this up. There's two steps uh, I want to, 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 to share with you guys that will hopefully, <coughs> hopefully equip you guys to be able to just meet the needs of your, uh, your neighbors, just love people well. And the first step is to 
you know, to ask good questions. And, and the second step is just to, to listen well. Right. And so as you're talking to your neighbors, as you're talking to your friends, as you're talking to people that you want to have, you know, just be obedient to Jesus and love them. Well, as you're talking to these neighbors, um, you know, like I said, we're going in, in this coronavirus. Things are crazy. People just have stuff on their minds. Right. And people have issues and people have problems. So as you're talking to them, as you're listening to them, and as your as your friend is telling you, man, I just lost my job, or man, my, my kids are driving me crazy, or whatever whatever the situation is, a good question to ask is, okay, that's that's I hear what you're saying, but but how is that? How are you handling that? How is that impacting you as a person? And then and then the people. And, and answering that question will start to share the needs that they have, the, the um, start to share their burdens, right? And so I have a buddy of mine who, um, who, uh, who just moved and, and he's, he's currently out of a job and he's worried about, um, yeah, he's just currently out of a job. And, and so asked, you know, how are you doing with that? He's like, well, you know, it's really tough. You know, things are, things are, you know, expensive. I live in a city where things are, are not cheap and, uh, you know, it's just financially draining. And so I know, okay, well, I mean, I don't have a whole bunch of money, but how, I could love, I could serve this person well by maybe sending him some money. Right. Um, he could have said, you know, man, it's just, I'm, I'm really having a hard time. Don't have a job. Um, and I'm just really having a hard time structuring my days at home. Like I, I just don't know what to do with my time. And so that person wouldn't need uh, financial assistance. That person may need just some love and some guidance. Maybe you share with him or her your 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 life and how you deal with things. And so, um, but but not just hearing what their circumstance is, what their issue is, but how their heart, what their heart, how their heart is responding to this issue. And if we can ask good questions and we can and we can listen well, then I think that that'll give us a great opportunity, like Jesus in the situation, just to, to meet people where they are at, to love on them well where they are at, for the glory of Jesus. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I have for you guys today. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, I love you guys. I miss you guys. I can't wait to see everybody and like just give everybody a hug. Uh, maybe we'll just have a big party or something. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I love you guys. Let me pray for us, and uh, and we'll call it we'll call it a day. Jesus, we thank you for uh, who you are, Lord. We thank you uh, that, that we thank you for being King, Jesus. We thank you that you call us to yourselves, and we thank you that as you call us to yourselves, you call us on mission to make much of you, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray that that you empower us. I pray that you give us this gift, this ability to really, really, really want to love you by loving our neighbors, loving those around us well, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for where you have places. We thank you that even in the middle uh, of this coronavirus, Lord, we thank you that you have placed us here to make much of you. Um, so so th thank you for that, Lord. I pray that we're able to do so well, Lord. Uh, we love you, Jesus, and we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Bye, guys. It was great seeing y'all.